Hey, uh, good evening. Dan Fitzpatrick here at StockMarketMentor.com, and it is Thursday, August 27th. I want to look at um, biotech specifically and actually exclusively, cell gene, and this is why. Okay, first we'll start with the sector. This is a big, uh, what I call, I, I would call it a shot across the bow, meaning <clears throat> the uptrend been pretty clear, buying all along the 50-day moving average, and then a big whoosh down. The reason I say I would call it is because this is much bigger than just the biotech. I mean, the entire market is one, this is one big shot across the bow. And by the way, that is the way I look at it for the entire market. Anything can happen. I'm digressing here, but that's what I do. Um, if I was royalty, I would be the Duke of digression. Um, I think that this was a big shot across the bow. This is the type of thing that, you know, you see these complacent money managers um, who all they know how to do is buy. Um, and they're, like I said, they're just complacent. Um, you're probably going to see this come up more. It's not coming in a straight line. Okay. This move, sorry, it's over. Okay. We could get a little more rally to the upside. And I know I'm ticking some of you off because you're a bull and you think that I'm so wrong whenever I say, ah, I don't really like Apple or I don't like this or I don't like that. I'm just a trader. Um, I'll go both ways in trading. Um, so anyway, what I'm looking at in the overall market is more, you know, probably a little more upside just because folks have a lot of cash now. Not everybody bought down here. There's a lot of selling going on. The panic is kind of subsiding and so money managers prudently are saying well i gotta put some money back to work you know some folks just rode through this whole thing white knuckled it uh, but generally speaking you know money managers unless they're hedge funds um i don't know of too many you know like guys that work for or trade through charles schwab or you know any number of other money managers that and we have some on on stock market mentor um, i've talked to you some to some of you guys you manage uh lots of money you probably just held through this whole thing because you're not going to sell after the s p's down eight percent or something like that i mean how much more more can it go down and anybody who's managed any kind of money for any amount of time has been through this although i gotta tell you this was pretty sporty it was pretty sporty um but if you've managed money for any amount of time, you know that the worst thing, and listen to me because if you're a trader here, you're a money manager. You know that the worst thing you can be doing is selling into this big decline. If the market's down, like in two big days here, okay, we're down um, 5%. Okay, by the way, I was on CNBC, on uh, on this day, say in the morning, actually, um, saying like, yeah, I think we're going to go lower. I think we're going to get down to 1910. You know, that happened. I just didn't expect it to happen the next trading day. Um, but money managers know that you're not, you don't sell when the s and is down 5%, just like you don't rush and buy a stock when the stock is up 5% when it's running, uh, just a little while ago, I, I had Fast Money on in the background, and I heard Karen Feinerman um, talking about that, about how kind of bad it felt. Um, I don't know if she was talking about a specific thing she did. I don't know. Um, but she was talking about how like bad she felt when she's buying a stock that's up when it's up okay so that's her instinct like no i want to buy stocks when they're down i want to buy stuff when it's on sale not when it's marked up um so similarly a good money manager feels bad when they're selling stocks on the way down they should actually according to their thesis according to their approach to the market they should be looking to buy more um, but that's not what's happening when you've got when you're fully invested in the market as most money managers are. They'll have a little cash component, but almost never more than 10 percent, almost never more than 10 percent. So you got a lot of money managers who have just sat here and watched this. And I'm sure they were sweating. 
Um, I'm sure the local watering hole probably saw them a little bit earlier than typically they do. Certainly if they're out here on the West Coast when the market um, closes at one o'clock, two words, happy hour. Um, but they just rode through this whole thing. Now we're looking to put any money to work that we can and back to biotech. Oh, let me finish this thought. My thought is this, at, again, shot across the bow. At some point, at some point in the future, in 2016, 2017, whatever, when this market really starts rolling over, a lot of folks who thought, oh, it's fine because we got a big rebound, maybe we even come up here, a lot of folks who thought it's just fine when the s and P's down here because finally investors realize there really isn't that much global growth. It's all just a canard. It's an illusion based on free money, thanks to the creature from Jekyll Island. Then you're going to look back on this and say, huh, that really meant something. Just like we look back on this now and say, wow, that really meant something. Seriously, I want you to think about this. This here was a warning that this can happen. This was the warning, but most folks shrug it off because we hit new highs. So this, I forget what the reason for this was, but there's always a stated reason for this. This time around, it was because, uh, because China's falling so far. Okay, well, whatever. It, there'll be another reason for the next one. But this was a shot across the bow by the bears saying like, you know what? We're not happy with the way stocks are trading. We're probably going to be selling sometime soon. Okay, um, sorry about that, I got interrupted. Anyway, this presages this, just like this, will presage something over here at some point because that's the way that markets trade. What I'm telling you is this, don't be a, soup, don't be a bear right now unless you wanna go you know, go into a cave and sleep for six months and then come out and wait and see what happened. This is not going to do this. It's just not. That's not the way markets trade. Never seen one that traded that way. But I could sure see this stuttering around here for a while and then in come Q3 earnings and they're not too good. And suddenly, okay, the bull market's over. So just be careful about that. But now let's get back to what I initially wanted to do in about a two minute video. And that is look at the IVB. We're back above the 200 day moving average. This is the stuff that is not economically sensitive. Nobody in the biotech industry gives a rip whether the Chinese are buying Teslas or iPhones or iWatches. Nobody cares in the biotech industry. So one of the stocks I want you to look at is one of the big dogs, the large capper. And this is why, because this isn't a trade. Now this was a trade, buy at 95, it's at a buck 23. If that's your, if that was what you did, get out tomorrow, just take your money and run. But this has been in a sideways consolidation. We've seen this volatility in both, both directions and it's in a sideways consolidation again. So what's the dealio? The deal is this, all of this trading down here and all of this trading up here, this has really raised the average cost basis of short-term traders to right around here. Why would I know that? Because this is where the big volume spike is and this is where the stock was trading. So this stock is trading with respect to short-term traders. I'm averaging here. It's trading at about par. In other words, it's according to and listen to me, I'm giving you pearls here, showing you how to do this stuff. Um, it's trading right around where a lot of traders own it. Because there was a big washout down here. This was the big day. And then the stock's up even more, another big volume day. You kind of put all of these together, these three days here, and you've got an average cost basis of right around here. So this stock, I think, is going to be churning more. I think it's going to be grinding around. You don't have to rush out and buy it tomorrow. You're not in danger of it getting away from you. But look at this because it is holding at the 200-day moving average. But take note of what I said with respect to shots across the bow. I want you to think about that. I want you to write that down. Remember it 
And then in six months, you can come back to me and say, Dan, you know, you were full of corn. Um, or you can say, wow, um, that shot across the bow stuff, hmm, maybe there's something to it. Okay, so, oh, and by the way, uh, one thing, I am going to be out next week. I'm, I'm on a vacation that is much needed and long overdue. But we have, for members now, we're giving a 30% discount off of our shorting workshop DVD series where we've got rave reviews by the bears, people who like to short stocks. It's really, really helpful. Uh, and you get a 30% discount off the member price if you are a member. So let me give you the user's manual. This is how you could hoodwink me and get the, um, get the, the member price. Sign up for a free 30 day trial at Stock Market Mentor. So now you're a member because we take, you know, free trial members too. You get the member price. Sign up, go ahead and um, buy the, the DVD and then cancel your membership. You'll never have to pay a dime. Or, you know, of course, and then by the way, you get 30 days that you can look at it anyway and you're probably going to want to stick around because I'm really good at what I do and, and everybody does really well. Uh, but whatever you want to do is fine. Just go ahead and take advantage of that little loophole there, hoodwink me, and get a great shorting uh, workshop for not very much money. I promise you, I promise you, if you do what I'm telling you to do in that workshop, you will make money on the short side, which is not something that too many people will say. Okay, I'll see you next time.